And joining us now is Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin, uh, former Marine, member of the Armed Services and Intelligence Committees, and the head of the Special uh, Select Committee on China. Your reaction to Steve Scalise uh, saying that he is nominated because he has more votes, 113 to 99, but he doesn't have a majority of the conference yet. Is that an impediment to him being named speaker when it goes to the floor sometime after three, we believe? Well, my hope is, uh, given everything everyone said prior to the vote about uniting behind whoever had the most votes, and 113 is a narrow majority, uh, that everyone would support Steve Scalise on the House floor, regardless of who they voted for. As you know, we have serious business that we need to do, and we can't be mired in a protracted speaker's race. I think there's bipartisan action that we can take today or early tomorrow on Israel, a bipartisan resolution, as well as providing support so that the military support we provide to Israel doesn't go dry. There are things we need to do that simply cannot happen until we nominate and choose a Speaker of the House. So my hope is that everybody in the Republican caucus will unite on the House floor if we have a vote later today. What do you expect regarding Israel? Do you expect a, a, a resolution, I presume, on Israel? But you expect some kind of supplemental, if assuming there's a speaker, that would be Israel alone, would it be Israel and Ukraine? What would you like to see as such an experienced uh, member of the military and of the military committees? Well, I think a resolution is table stakes. I'm not trying to minimize the importance of a bipartisan resolution. I think it would send a strong signal right now. And it seems that both uh, Chairman McCall and Ranking Member Meeks have worked very collaboratively together across the aisle on such a resolution. But I think we need to go beyond that. I think we have the, the momentum right now to treat Israel separately, to make sure that our war reserve stock for allies program is sufficient, make sure that Iron Dome doesn't run dry. There's a variety of things we can provide to Israel in this time of need. I think the negotiations over Ukraine might take a little bit longer. To me, a, there is a, a bipartisan bargain to be had on border security and Ukraine funding. And then obviously the thing lurking in the background of all of this is funding for Taiwan to make sure that we don't have a failure of deterrence in the Indo-Pacific at the same time we're seeing war break out in the Middle East as well as an ongoing war in Europe. Now, in terms of the speaker vote, does Steve Scalise, if there remain 99 votes for Jim Jordan, would he need Democratic votes on the floor in order to go over the top? Yeah, if we have holdouts, it, it can be far less than 99. It can be 5 or 10, depending on how many members are, are present. If they choose not to vote for Steve Scalise, and if you assume no Democrats are going to vote for Steve Scalise, which I think is a safe assumption, uh, then we'd have to try something different. Uh, my hope is my colleagues in the Republican caucus would, would unite behind the person that won the votes in our sort of secret ballot. But if that doesn't happen, then we're going to have to get creative. And I think the, the problem with that is then we waste further time uh, that we need to be spending on doing work on these critical foreign policy issues as we see the deterioration of deterrence in various theaters around the world. In addition to providing support for our allies, we need to rearm ourselves. We still haven't passed the National Defense Authorization Act. We haven't passed the defense appropriation. We're running dangerously low on stockpiles that we need to maintain conventional and strategic deterrence globally, not just to deal with what's happening in Gaza as well as what's happening in Ukraine. And without Democratic votes, of course, you would still have that problem that any five Republicans could tank that and stretch it all out. Uh, what about the way the president has handled the Israel crisis so far by stating such strong, extraordinary support for Israel, given the speech that we saw last night? I'm glad the president has indicated his strong support for Israel. And now it's time for us Congress working in concert with the executive branch to back those words up with action. The words mean nothing unless we actually provide the support that Israel needs to defend itself. And make no mistake, Israel is under attack from an evil terrorist group. What we're seeing, the, the images we're seeing come out of Gaza, that Hamas is deliberately leaking out of Gaza are absolutely horrifying. This is an attempt to wipe Israel off the map, to kill as many Jews as possible. And it's important that we stand firmly in support of our closest ally in the Middle East in Israel. Obviously, I have some disagreements with the Biden administration on their overall regional policy with respect to Iran. I would not like this $6 billion payment for hostages to go forward, as well as the $10 billion that we waived in order for Iraq to pay Iran. I think there's more we can do to isolate Iran. But at least when it comes to standing with Israel, I hope that that is a bipartisan thing 
everything in both word and deed going forward. Um, and John Kirby said yesterday that that would be an option to refreeze the six billion, even though none of it has been spent yet. Uh, so, are you getting any signals, other signals from the administration that that's something they would negotiate? No official signals thus far. Um, I know there are concerns here in Congress about that money going forward and that money being used to fund Iran's terrorist proxies and whether or not you believe that Iran had a hand directly in authorizing or tacitly uh, authorizing this, this attack on Israel. There's no question that Iran has been Hamas's primary patron. Hamas benefits from Iranian money, training, and, and weapons. And, and more directly, Hezbollah is an action arm of Iran in Lebanon. And so certainly if Hezbollah got more uh, engaged in the conflict and there was sort of a two-front war launched against Israel, there would be no question that we have to impose maximum pressure uh, on Iran. I mean, the reason that we were seeing this historic level of rapprochement between Israel and the Sunni area of Gulf states, the Saudis in particular, was because of the shared threat posed by Iran. That is sort of the long pole in the tent that unites our traditional allies, Israel and the Sunni area of Gulf states. Uh, Jim Jordan has apparently said that he's not going to whip votes. Does that indicate that he's going to back off and let Steve Scalise go forward? Maybe some of his supporters would jo join uh, Steve Scalise and put him over the top? You know, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I think most of the people that supported uh, Jim Jordan will vote for Steve Scalise on the floor and abide by the caucus rules or the caucus tradition. But have you seen in, in recent months sort of the unwritten rules of Congress seem to be breaking down as people increasingly feel less loyalty to the institution? Uh, and so I worry that a small number of people could block the work that the House uh, needs to do. We have a narrow majority. We have divided government. Nobody's going to get 100 percent of what they want. There are things I would like to do uh, on national security issues, on China issues that it's just going to be hard to get done. All the more reason, in my opinion, why we should be focusing our efforts in what remains of the Congress on all of the process deficiencies that Republicans and Democrats agree upon. We can all agree that our budget and appropriations process, process, process is hooking. So why not, in a way that's policy agnostic and doesn't advantage any party, fix the plumbing of Congress right now when you're going to be limited in terms of what you can achieve on policy grounds? And just a quick question. Was the motion to vacate brought up at all in the conference to do away with that, the one-person vote? Uh, we did talk about it uh, in, in the conference. There were a lot of people, myself included, who feel like, uh, given what we saw last week with the removal of the speaker for the first time in history, that we should raise the bar again for a motion to vacate. Uh, we did not take up a specific rule change. However, I think that's something that's going to have to be adjudicated going forward after we select a new speaker, because then the concern is you just you kind of go through this this process every few months, the minute eight or so members get dissatisfied uh, with the, the speaker.